Well, we're glad to see you this morning. Let's go and open a Bible and developing your faith. Developing your faith in the Lord this morning. We're talking about the story of Job. It's not Job. I used to call it that when I first became a Christian. I called it Job. It's not. It's different. You say it differently. And so, for those, <laughs> I didn't know. And so, hey, where's, help me. Uh, I'm going to talk about Job. No, it's, it's different. So I had to learn. And uh, everyone who becomes a new Christian always it's like a child, like a baby, growing in the Lord and we're learning how to become uh, uh, what God wants us. We talked about this morning, developing your faith. Do you ever feel weak in your faith? Do you ever feel weak in the things of the Lord? Do you ever feel that there's no hope? I was looking this morning. I don't have the... Let's, for the moment, let's look in Job. <laughs> Uh, let's look at, look at look in Job. That's right before Psalms. And in Job, the book of Job, and chapter number 20, 23. 23. I don't have the first for you this morning up there, but we'll get to it. We'll, we'll get to it in just a moment. But in Job chapter 23. You got there? When you get there in the Bible in Job chapter 23, uh, you found it? You can wave at me. Wave at me, okay. All right, now I know you're there. Now let's look at first, just the first four words of first eight. What does it say? Behold, I go forward. Let me say it again. Behold, I go forward. We cannot stand here and stay stagnant and expect our faith to grow. I want to hold them. I'm trying to hold my horse a little bit this morning. I have two first two points. I'm not planning on staying on those two points. I'm going to develop number three. But here this morning, and this morning, the Bible says in first Rome, uh, but here it says, I go forward. Job had the face, and when he looked on first nine, when he looked on his left hand, it seemed there was nothing there. He looked on his right hand, it seemed there, there, was, not, there was nothing there. But the Bible goes on to say in first number, in first, even though I cannot see him on the left, I cannot see him on the right, I cannot see him, but Job had the faith to know when he trusts him. As verse 10, he said, for, I, for he knoweth the way that I take. Who's my father this morning? My heavenly father, he is in charge of my life. I let him have take host over. Though many years ago, when I surrendered 100% of my life to God, I didn't reserve 90% and give it to God and keep 10%. I surrendered it all. In 1984, I surrendered everything to God. And I thank the Lord as I look back in 1984 and that day, as a young man, I surrendered and said, Lord, my life, you take it, you take this life and use it for your glory if you choose to. And I can promise you this morning, there's been through the trials of our lives that we didn't feel like going on. There'll be some times that we don't want to go on, but the promises of God are for the people who submit themselves, fulfill God's will. Here this morning, uh, the Bible says in Romans, uh, if we'll go on, I shall come forth as gold. Have you ever had a stomach where you felt some things that are happening in your life? Boom, stab, and a boom, stab. Boom, stab. You ever been there before? I have found, I have found the best sol solution for me, number one, uh, for me, and it will be for you too, because God's word is true. He says, I have to learn, number one, to read and meditate on God's word. When I read and meditate on God's word, it always just encourages me. When I don't understand what's going on, 
I don't want to turn on the TV and listen about the news. And if anything, uh, if anything, I watch the news, and yeah, I want to keep up what's going on. I don't want to put my head in the sand and not knowing what's going on. We have to understand what's going on. However, I don't want the news to be to control my life because the bad, the, the, the bad news is always there. The news is always when we report, report bad, and rare do we hear the good news on uh, our every day. And now, uh, some of the young people have never experienced, before it used to be the news, ABC, CBS, uh, NBC, on time what? 5.30, 6.30 p.m., one time a day. And now we have 24 hours of news that just overwhelmed us. So sometimes they're looking up to make, to make news. If you don't be careful, it'll discourage you. And I was sitting there this morning, this, this week, and I turned on the news, and really in less than two minutes, I turned it off. I got up early in the morning, 4 a.m. sometime, got up at 4 a.m. this morning, uh, and, I, and I turned on the news, see what's going on, and I saw the, I should have known, I turned it off. And I began to pray. It's amazing how the peace of God comes back. We all need to learn to take God's word. He said, well, it's, listen, this book is made for the Christian to grow. And you and I cannot grow without the word of God. This word, this Bible is, is honey. It's sweet. This book is bread. We must have it. It is meat. We must partake it. If we don't drink of this water, we will starve to death spiritually. You say, why? So much problem in my life. Focus on the word of God. And you'll find peace to be there. This week, uh, a friend of mine has been talking with me for a while. He texted me, and his name was Phil. He's in Chicago. And some, some uh, I think it was 6 a.m. on Thursday morning, he texted me at first. Let's go look in Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Got the first. Isaiah chapter 26, and he texted me this sweet verse. Now, he didn't know, but he said, in verse 3 and 4, Thou shalt keep him who in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted thee. So the Bible said in Isaiah chapter uh, 26, Thou keep yourself in perfect, mature peace. You want it? Stay in God's Word. God's Word will always bring peace when you don't understand the storms in your life. Just on the brink of moment, when you're ready to give up, when you're ready to give up, you're going to find out that God, the goal was right there. I have often thought to myself, if I, I'm afraid to miss church. Many years ago, many years ago, I was in college, and uh, I worked at a lumber, a lumber yard, and that was my job for college. I had three jobs, and, uh, three jobs, but one of my, my jobs was I worked at a lumber yard. It was payless. Lumber yard. And I was, and, I, and as I was working that morning, I had to work all day. When I, because, and then I had to, and then I, at 1 p.m., we had lunch, it was on Sunday, and then we had lunch, and then, and then on uh, 5.30, the store closed, and I thought, and then I get to the, I'm sorry, let me back up, the, church, the store closed at 6, and church starts at 6, 
I didn't have, we still had to clean up before we get to church. So I was still in my work clothes and, uh, and, and, and now cleaning up the store outside, setting up the wood and all that, making sure everything was clean. We have to empty the trash and all those things in the, uh, in the yard of the lumber yard. We had to throw it all away. And now look at my time. Church is soon to be finished, and I was discouraged, and I didn't have time, so I thought, well, I have 10 minutes. So I drove to the church house. We hadn't started the invitation, and I opened the door, and I watched the interpreter. I was watching the interpreter, and just for that brief, that brief moment, I heard something that changed my life forever. So you might think, ah, oh, it's not important for you to show up to God's word. You never know. I'm always afraid of what I will miss. There'll be something that was said that could change me. Now, wait a minute. Say, so, well, let me ask you a question. Do you remember what you ate for supper yesterday? I don't. Do you remember... <laughs> Do you remember what you ate for breakfast yesterday? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you remember what you ate for breakfast three days ago? No. But you obviously need it, right? You obviously have to have it. So here, the word of God is the same. It's meat that we have to, we need to take it. Sometimes it lasts. I mean, sometimes my wife's food is more delicious one on Thursday than it was on Friday. I mean, man, man, you understand what I mean? So, so, but see, sometimes you remember a meal, sometimes you don't. But I'm saying this morning, I'm saying this morning that you may not always remember what you hear on Sunday morning, or Sunday night, or Wednesday night, or when you read the Bible. But let me tell you this this morning. And by the way, it might encourage you. You know, the, the wonderful thing about YouTube is you can caption. Captions, you can read the caption. It might be good for you to get, get yourself a good sermon, a good preacher, and listen to those sermons. It always encourages me when it inspires me when I hear the Word of God. Uh, here this morning, I want you I would say this. Reading, studying, and meditating on the Word of God is so much better than watching the news. And it's amazing to me when I stand and read the Word of God. On that Thursday morning, I got that text from my friend Bill from Chicago, and I read that. It encouraged me. My challenge to you and I is don't look at your circumstances. Look to your circumstances, and don't let those discourage you. Because those circumstances will discourage you. We've got to keep our eyes on him. When my eyes are on him, meditating on the word of God, I find my heart is always encouraged. But here's what's hard. When we need encouragement, we call a friend first. But God said, call unto me, and I will deliver thee. Call unto me in the day of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. Call unto me. I remember a story of a deaf man named Bernardo. Bernardo. You know Oklahoma City is famous for what? Tornadoes. Tornadoes. And, uh, you know, I have seen a lot of tornadoes when I was living there in Oklahoma State for 23 years. And it's an amazing thing what tornadoes can do. The power of a tornado is very strong, but it's also, I think sometimes it's a nice reminder. Sometimes, the, the, I'm going to share this morning about some things, but he says, but there's a tornado uh, in, the, in the city of, um, uh, where, where's the band live? No, more. 
more Oklahoma, right out, right outside. Uh, my friend has a pastor that I, he's a pastor there, his small church building. He's all, I told him, you mean you, you pray, I don't want you to get hurt, but I'm hoping some, uh, he, we both were talking about his building, uh, when it needed to be renovated, need to be changed, maybe God would put a storm, a tornado to hit your building, you get a new building, but we don't want anyone to be hurt. <laughs> Uh, we don't want anyone to be hurt. But my friend, Savan, he, we, we, you know, I, I've gone through that city several times, more than 10 times I've seen tornadoes hit. But it's interesting. The walls all around are destroyed. I have seen, I have seen closets. I have seen. Let me, let me see. Let me see there. <clears throat> I have seen. On a closet door. I swear, PJs behind it, standing there, didn't even move. The whole inside the closet destroyed. I have seen with my own eyes of a back on a hook. It's still there. I have seen a, a toothpick driven through a tree and sticked out. It penetrates, and it sticks out. Penetrates, and didn't crush. A toothpick. The power of a storm. But I want to say this morning, if you and I will learn to stand strong, God's words will never be moved. Behind the door where that coat was standing on the hook, it will stay still. So meditate on the word of God. Number two. Number two this morning. We're moving on this morning. The number two, I've changed some things this morning. But here, listen. Uh, maintain a right relationship with God. Whew. That's a challenge sometimes. It's a challenge. The temptation is all around us. Developing our faith in the Lord. And we, how do we do it? We daily, we confess our sin before God. Daily, we cry out to the Lord the forgiveness of my sin. Um, <laughs> I've told before, but there's a famous preacher. Before, his name was John R. Rice. John R. Rice. He's dead. He's in heaven many years ago. But John R. Rice had a habit before he went to bed every night. He kneel at his bedside. He kneel at his bed. And he any wrong that he had done, he puts it down on toilet paper. He puts it on a toilet paper. And he writes it on. He puts it and flushes it. He writes it down, tears it, and puts it and flushes it. He takes it down and flushes it. Let me say this morning. And you don't have to remember your sin when you confess your sin. Thank God he has forgiven it and covered your sin in your life. You're faced with a situation. You feel like the, the devil is trying to remind you of your past. The devil will come up to you and tell you this, 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 this. You tell the devil to get out. The devil wants to, the, 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 the devil's trying to destroy your life. And he knows, and by the way, let me say this. Summertime, I've been a preacher for over 40 years, and I'm going to say, summertime is the greatest time of temptation. The greatest time for temptation to go, to go fall or surrender to sin is during the summertime. People neglect the spiritual food during the summertime. People neglect their, 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 their 
They, they see all around the openness of sin that could grow up with that. But I want to challenge you this morning. I don't want that. It takes guts. It takes character. It takes courage to say no. I look at my two daughters this morning. Come up here, honey. I don't know. Come up here. Tonight, I go to church, uh, and I'm going to hear, I'm going to hear, I'm going to hear her boyfriend. <laughs> First time I've ever admitted a call boyfriend. David, David, I'm thinking to myself like you, your wife, your wife, I mean, your, your as soon as you get married, it's hard on you. Well, she, I know, she want, if I let her get married now, she will. <laughs> but, but tonight, we, our family, are planning to go to listen to her boyfriend preach. I told her last night, you sure we, we should go because we make him nervous. I try to listen to me. But I look back in my life and so often temptation came to me. I say no. I can't do that. So often something happened wrong to me. Stop. I'll never forget some of the big great hurt that I've had. And so some of the temptations that I sit in my, I remember sitting in the living room in Knoxville, staring straight ahead, not moving my eyes, and just looking straight ahead under so much stress and so much strife, and I'm looking at that. For almost three hours, not even moving. Just looking straight ahead. All these things and bother me. Just straight ahead, just my mind was numb. The hurt was grievous. But I, I left my suit, my tie on, and I stepped there. And I, typically when I get home, I just get home relax. I, I change clothes to relax. It was on Sunday afternoon, I just sat there, straight ahead. I couldn't cry, I wanted to cry. For some reason, my family was upstairs, and typically on Sunday, we're in, in that room, and we eating supper. For some reason, we're sitting there, just, my wife was somewhere, and I stood. And I said to myself, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. You have to shake it off. Shake. 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 If you don't shake it off, you let those box of hurt and grief control you. And what if I said, I don't want you, I don't want to go on. Maybe they mess up their life because of my, uh, my decision. Now, I'm not saying they're angels. They're not. I've had to deal with both of them with some problem, problem come up with fix it. But I, I was sat in their rooms five times this week, probably about five times this week, just stuff that. I lay on her bed with her, just sat and talked. She has a chair. She has a chair to go in and sit down. She's laying on the bed. And I said, just talk. Can you imagine? Thank you. Can you imagine? It's not worth letting what other people do to me or against me. 
It's not always about me. Maybe God wants to put me in a situation that He said, if you want to be. How many of you ever prayed before? Oh, oh, to be like thee. Oh, oh, to be like thee. Have you ever ever prayed that before? I do. I would pray and say, Lord, I want to be like you. And I want to tell you this morning. I don't know what I was saying because that means when people are mean to me, I have to learn to be love them whether they're mean or not. Sometimes people, and listen, if you want to be like Jesus, when other people are grievous to you, you'll learn to love them. The Bible says on Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, sometimes our problem, our own thoughts. But I want to tell you this morning, all we can do is just keep our eyes on Jesus. And then when others, and when, if you want to be like him, you show people to Jesus Christ. Show others, show them. Those four girls who invited me to Christ, though, you know, their life, they've had some problems come. It's called life. Life will happen. But I look back at those four girls who introduced me to Christ. That, those four girls helped change me. So even though I never see them, I probably haven't seen them for over 20 years. Someday I hope to bring all four of them here. But if not, I do write, March 22nd, I always write, say, thank you. Because of you introducing Jesus to me, I now can say to others. So I challenge you this morning. You want to be like him? I mean, my attitude, I got to die to self daily. When I feel stabbed, people misunderstand me. People misunderstand you. You've got to die. You say the secret, the secret to living for God is learning. Watch this. Copy with me. Die daily. Die daily. Okay. A dead man has no feelings. Great peace I pray, who love thy law, nothing shall offend them. Dead people have no feelings. Psalm chapter 119, verse 165. When I read those verses, when I'm discouraged, I'm encouraged. Because I see and I trust in the Lord. Number three, don't run. From your trials. Don't run from your trials. Face them with courage. Face them. Listen to me. You might be broken. You might be hurt. But all we are so we, me too, will fall of self. And God wants to break us. So he can mold us up to be strong for his glory. When we see this, I 
I don't want this trouble. And we run from that problem. We will never know what God intended to make with us. I have an eagle in my office. Some, some years ago, we crumbled, I want to say about maybe, uh, maybe 25 pieces, it broke. Oh, I love those bookends. It was eagle. It was nice. I loved those. Beautiful. And somehow one broke. And I said, man, I wish I could fix this. I love that. Remember, I know a person who knows I'm make. So I took all those pieces, I wrapped them up, and I took them all to him, to that to that lady, and she fixed it all. I came back two weeks later, and it was like almost, wow, how did you do that? Put it back together. And now, over 20 years ago, it happened. 20 years ago, I have an office. I'm saying this morning, God can make you a better person if we let him. Now, I'll go back to in James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It's saying the previous verse, we just had it. And it's saying, uh, even though the, know this, the word of God is telling you to know this. Hey, when you're faced with something, you're faced with problems, hey, know this. The trying of your faith, <coughs> work it patient. The Bible says, let patience continue to have its work. When it's finished, it'll be fine. Their father would have had a chance to quit. And I look back, I never regret it when I did not quit. I have met many people who themselves regret when they quit. May God help us. I'm a, and I say this morning, Job was sorrowful, yes. But it was not grievous. He knew, he had trust in his heart that it was in it for the Lord. For the Lord. He knew. In the next one. But Job was submissive. Troubles did not stop him. The third thing. The third thing. Job spoke. Listen to me. He said, and now listen, Job had everything. He had all the wealth. He lost he had, he, he had over, he had more than, more, more than 380 servants, workers. Back then they called them servants. But he had over, over 300 people work for him. He lost them all. <laughs> he had Job, Job, let me give you the, num the exact number. Job had 7,000 sheep. He lost it all. He had 3,000 camels. Camels, he lost it all. He had over 1,000 oxen, and he lost it all. He had 500 uh, donkeys, he lost it all. He lost all of his children. And it's even on his own life, said, forsake God. Go ahead, forsake God. Leave God. And Job said, no, I'm going to stay. See, he says in Job chapter 1, verse 21, I was born naked. I soon will go back to my burial naked. You have everything. You lost everything. It's okay. But Job said, I will bless the name of the Lord forever. My challenge to you this morning, and I go in the next thing, <clears throat> someone is watching you. 
what will it take for you to quit? And the next, you can become, you can become a lighthouse for someone in the midst of their storm. When you quit, you will look back and regret. As I said before, I have never met someone who quit and regret it. I mean, uh, and didn't regret it. Just go through it. Go through it. And then next thing, I got to close this morning. May God help us to stay close to the Lord so that when trouble comes, we don't get them up. Maybe I know many of you have faced some problems in your life this summer. And I hope this morning that you can be encouraged. There are people with health problems here this morning. There are people that are not here this morning because of health problems. And they're, they're discouraged. I see my, my friend David. Uh, he just loves, he loves to come to help here this morning. And he's always encouraged me to me. As I see that I see CJ and Deborah have gone through some problems in the past. I know that Mindy and, and, and all of you have gone through some problems. But problems will make you strong. And my encouragement to you this morning, let God be your deliverer. As I close the last thing here, when my trouble comes, I know this. I know. God's word is true. He will never forsake me. When I am close to him, he will rescue me. Listen, it's hard to get rescue when you're not close to him. You see, from here to here, I can go chase David and grab him and help him bring him back to shore. But the farther he goes, time will be gone that I cannot help him. I heard about, I read about a story this morning. I'll close with the story. This morning, the lady by the name of Frances Chadwick, one of the greatest swimmers ever in open water, I mean, the sea. She was a swimmer. She was the first woman to ever swim across the English Channel in both directions. Frances, she decided in 1953 she wants to swim from the islands of, of, uh, of, of I'm sorry, Catalina Islands to the shores of California. It was 26 mi miles. As she was swimming in open waters for over 15 hours swimming, she was surrounded by thick fog. She, she began to struggle. She couldn't see in front of her. And she saw and her, her mother was in the boat. Her mother was in the boat. And her mother told her, you can't do it. You can't do it. Go ahead and get into the boat. It's too difficult. There's too much challenge. You can't. Go ahead, go ahead and give up. Her mother looked at her in pity and said, give up. And then soon after that, she heard that from her mother. She said, maybe I can't do it. She struggled a little bit longer. Finally, she said, okay, she gave up. She got into the boat. When she got into the boat, she could see in the boat 
right there, right there, less than one mile, she could have been finished. One mile. She regretted listening to the wrong advice. Her mother. When we get discouraged and we lose heart, I want to say this morning, victory is nigh. Victory is nigh. So two months later, Francis, she said, I almost made it. She was not content. So she went back to the Catalina Islands and began to swim again. And again, the thick fog would come past her. And she could not see. I don't know if she brought her mother with her that time. <laughs> but she finished the swim, 26 miles. Can you imagine the joy and fulfillment she got because she did not quit? I say that close this morning. You want to develop your faith? Let God build you. Trust him, and you will come as gold. Let's all stand. If God challenges you this morning, if God's word challenges you, why don't you this morning you come to the altar, say, Lord, help me not to give up. Help me to go on. Help me to be strong and more. And the courage, the courage. My two daughters soon going to college. They may face with problems there. People will mistreat them more, maybe. Maybe there'll be people there that steal and lie and cheat from them. I don't know. But it's not a time to quit. It is never Never a good time to quit. When you get mad at someone, don't quit. When you get hurt by another person, don't quit. When someone does wrong to you, stay strong. Turn your eyes upon him because he will guide you through it. Francis, Chadwick got the victory, went back and swam, and she was content. May God help you all this morning. May help us. If God touched your heart, go through and talk with the Lord.